been saying a lot this week, if you want to understand the character of this market, it's really worth looking at the leaders. Specifically, specifically the stocks that managed to join that exalted group known as the New High List. And today, a small company called the Rubicon Project, that's R-U-B-I, just made a new 52-week high. Rubicon Project is a play on what's known as programmatic ad buying. They've taken the process of purchasing and selling digital advertising, and they automated it with one of the industry's largest real-time cloud-based big data computing systems that processes trillions of transactions each month. Companies amassed a huge quantity of data that, that they then use to help their clients get the most bang for their advertising bucks. There's an old joke in the advertising industry. It's a, I know I can cut half of my ad budget. I just don't know which, to, which half to cut. But Rubicon's platform turns what had been an art into a science. Now, the company benefits from the rise of digital is particularly mobile ads, which may seem like old news. But the fact is that we're still in the middle of a decades-long shift from old media to digital which only accounts for about a quarter of the global ad market, even as it's growing like a weed. And this programmatic segment is by far the fastest growing component. Of course, they have plenty of competition, including from the likes of Alphabet, which you might know as Google. However, the Rubicon project remains the largest independent automated solution for buying and selling mobile ads. Plus, the company reported a fabulous quarter at the end of February, gloriously accelerating revenue growth up 125% year over year, and a gigantic 39-cent earnings beat off a 33-cent basis, not to mention robust full-year guidance. I think that's a part of the reason why this stock has been growing ever since. Even after this rally, the stock only sells at 19 times earnings. So does it have more room to run? Let's take a closer look with Todd Tappan. He's the chief financial officer of the Rubicon Project. To learn more about his company and his prospects. Mr. Tappan, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Thank you Todd. Have a seat. You know, so I was thinking when I started the street, we had all these companies that did this advertising stuff, and they all uh, never made any money, and they went bust. You guys are making a lot of money, and it doesn't seem like there's anybody else that only a few people left that are competing with you. Well, first, thank you for having me on the sure. show. It's a real pleasure. You know, Rubicon Project is automating advertising, as you said. And, you know, we should talk about why that matters and what does it actually mean. Well, as you also stated, for decades now, marketers have faced that conundrum of not knowing where their return was really coming from, right. from their marketing investment. And even now, we have marketers that are purchasing 300 million U.S. television households on a sample set of two to 3,000. Which, in the digital world, is inane. So as we move into the digital world, two very important things happen. One is that ability to measure and precisely match that demographic requirement for that campaign mm -hmm. can now be done on a person-by-person -person basis. The second thing that's important is the inventory, those places where the marketers can find their audience and an impression have exploded. So as a result, you need the automation in order to be able well, to reach that. Definitely, but when I think of that, I think, well, why not just use Google? Why do I need Rubicon Project? Well, Rubicon Project has what we call a complete solution. And what we mean by that is, from the customer standpoint, a agency or an advertiser can now reach their audience to any type of inventory across right. any type of media, whether it be display or video, and they can do that across any type of platform, whether it be mobile or whether it be desktop. And it, also connecting buyers and sellers directly. Now, there are very, very few participants that actually can complete that holistic Why solution. Why is that? There used to be dozens of companies that were trying to do this. What happened? Did they just get winnowed out? Did other people come in with predatory pricing? Why did so many companies not uh, compete anymore in this? There's a number of companies in the sector, and many of them are focused on specific elements of the okay. market. So, for example, just mobile or just video or right. just on the buyer side. So when you think about that complete solution, it really is Rubicon Project, it's Google, and Facebook, who primarily operates within their own domain. Look, Google, they have whole divisions that are set up to lose money for years. What happens if they decide to give it away? You know, Google for a long time has had a great prominence with regard to the long tail aspect of the business. When we say long tail, we're talking about smaller advertisers and mm -hmm. publishers. They can leverage their search business and they do a terrific right. job. What's happened is, with respect to the development of Rubicon Project, is we now reach one of the largest, most premium audiences in the world. In fact, we reach over a billion people. Wait, we can have, you tell me if, if I know you have some clients. That, just when you say we reach, you mean certain clients that are big clients, like uh, Cure, right? Our customers are some right. of the largest publishers in the world. Okay. News Corp, Viacom, eBay, Walmart, and all of the major agencies. And through that, we reach over a billion people okay. worldwide. Now, we will use 50,000 machine learning algorithms in a simultaneous basis, artificial intelligence right. fuel, processing up to 9 trillion bid requests every single month. And that type of 
processing, processing power and that type of data really has given us a tremendous advantage, and so has the complete solution. And as you can imagine, some of the premium publishers that we serve are competitive with Google because they also, right. you know, they have their own own and operator. But do you tell uh, customers that what CPM, so to speak, the metric that you uh, they have to pay, that, that you get, uh, would they know it ahead of time? Would I, well, you say, listen, I only want to do it at $3. I mean, what happens? So let me use a parochial example. Let's say you're a Wall Street Journal salesperson. Okay. Good. And let's take the, the paper. Let's take the, let's move from the offline sure. to the online. And you're selling an ad on the marketplace section. Well, you know the content, and you're going to call who you think is going to best sure. match that, and you're going to negotiate prices. You might call Ford and, and Kmart <laughs> and McDonald's. And you know, after a period of time, you'll arrive at some insertion order and right. you'll have your deal. Now enter the digital world. Well, that particular placement, we now provide that particular salesperson with an enormous amount of data by which they can precisely say, I can actually increase my CPM by virtue okay. of my knowledge of all of the data. And now the marketer, on the other hand, they're willing to pay more for a more targeted ad. So if it's Ford, for example, and they want to uh, promote their F-150, sure. they might do that to males. So well, that's very general. But let's say they have a certain promotion in California. They might want to promote it to just males 25 to 35 and in they California have, and with you a specific have income. Mm -hmm. We have okay. that data. Now, what also happens is very important. Is that particular ad in the digital world? That particular ad is going to change 100 times during the course of a right. day, and there's probably 100 like them on, on their entire yeah. site. So now you must have the data, and you must have the volume. So we assist with both rate I, and volume metrics. All right, I got it. It's great to understand this because it's very important. It's the new world. That's Todd Tappan. He's the CFO of the Rubicon Project. They have money's back in for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.